Hey YouTube, good afternoon. Uh, so we just got another point release for uh, version 10.11. We're on 10.11.2 now. Um, quick show you of the software. There you go. Basically, we're going to do a first impressions drive with Memorial Park and just see what we got. With the point release, none of the release notes changed. I didn't see any difference um, at, at quick glance. So I'm not exactly sure what they were working on. Uh, obviously, it was pretty obvious that they stopped the uh, deployment uh, as there were a lot of testers out there that didn't have a build. It needs to stop. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, that was a good creep. Now it needs to go with some boost. Give me a boost. All right, here we go. So that was an unprotected right turn into traffic. It stayed in the right lane, which was good. It's changing over to the middle lane. So, let's see how this build goes. Uh, we'll try to get this first impressions uh, video out today and uh, let y'all take a look at it. So it's the uh, Giga Texas event this week on Thursday, I believe. I'm actually heading to Austin on Wednesday night. Uh, I don't have a ticket. I'm still hoping somebody will let me in the gate with them uh, or maybe some last minute tickets will go out I don't know but either way I don't have a ticket yet so if anybody watching this video is willing to to help me out let me know uh, if you have a ticket uh, otherwise I'm probably just gonna be hanging out in Austin I plan on going to the uh, Tesla con event uh, on Friday and I'm also probably gonna be at um, maybe on Thursday morning I think there's a little bit of a youtubers event I bought a ticket to that I'll be there uh, for that one also Maybe get to meet up uh, with a few other folks. But it should be a good week in Austin either way. Okay, um, so far so good. For those of you that know this first impressions drive, I like to uh, disengage and take a right. We do have some construction on this route where last time it did quite a bit of rerouting. Um, I might let it go ahead and do its own rerouting this time instead of me forcing the route so much on the way back anyway. I really wish we knew what was changed in these point releases. Obviously, for them to have halted the, the, the wider release to all the other beta testers and then put out a dot release means they, they saw something they didn't like um, or that was reported. I mean, obviously, I, I reported quite a few you know smaller issues. They haven't solved the larger ones, but um, I'm, not, I'm not really sure what would have held up the wider release. Uh, a lot of people were asking that on Twitter this week. should be getting the green light then I'm gonna to need to take a right turn I'm gonna go ahead and use the blinker um, and see if it'll go ahead and make the lane change for me looks like it did just fine so far so good seen anything there's the disengagement with the stock and the blinker to turn right here to change the route I still haven't figured out a good way to use waypoints for any of these drives I know uh, a lot of folks uh, including Kaushik up in Canada have been doing their first drives on the FSD beta and are just starting to figure out the logistics of, of doing some test drives and I think it's great um, all the energy being put into those videos up in Canada obviously that is a, a new operational domain uh, to include even some uh, some geofencing, I guess, to prevent it from being used uh, in some major cities. I think it was Toronto. I hope I'm not mistaken on that. All right, we're going to take the left turn here. It looks like it's protected at the moment. We'll see if this green arrow holds. It's got the blinker on. Turned the yellow arrow there, and it continued to roll it. That was nice. I would have done the same thing there turn a little bit wide but there was room to do it it didn't hug that left lane just gonna keep checking the route okay looks like it's got us going right there and I do believe we have some construction up there with the roundabout that's being built 
Still no markings on the right for these parking spaces, but it's definitely not using it as drivable space still. All right, we've got lots of barrels coming up. Going to continue to be marked as cones, I'm sure. Yep. A double red light, and let's see how it navigates this. Looks like the lane identification is correct. Oh, no, there it goes. It's trying to jump out. See, it shouldn't have done that. Um, mostly because that was a left turn lane, and it got impatient. Yeah, it won't re-engage right now. There's quite a bit going on for it to re attach. All right, let's see if reattaching it in the middle of all these barrels is a little too much. All right, here it's stopping again. It did this on the last build, and I'm tapping the accelerator now, and I've released the accelerator, so it's continuing on its own there. So I, it needed my confirmation to proceed there, even though there was not a stoplight. Granted, it's construction uh, with what is probably uh, um, a mapping mismatch from vision. There used to be a stoplight there, so maybe it was stopping for old map data. I've reported that before. There's a, a quick blinker on this S-curve here. I'll show you the S-curve. It uh, sometimes uses these blinkers on these S-curves. I don't know what the logic is that makes it do that. Obviously, some amount of turn, it decides it needs the blinker. There's another blinker and that's not appropriate. I'm gonna hit the snapshot on that just because I was thinking about it. Another blinker, yeah. It's doing the S-curve fine. It has a lead car to kind of manage its speed here a little bit too. Um, so I'm not sure if it's managing the speed based on that lead car, which is what I think it is because it is below the, the selected speed. Right, we have a little bit of a kind of a, a quick town here. This is Avondale. It's a neighborhood in Jacksonville. Usually a lot of pedestrians and cars coming in and out of parking spaces that create scenarios sometimes pretty quickly where the car needs to react. All right, it stopped there. It was a rolling stop. I, I think it was just yielding to that car in case he came out. We had the right of way. All right, so the lights are green and the cars are just going slow. So hopefully it's patient and stays in its lane and doesn't uh, try to jump out of the lane like it did back there. All right, so far so good. The double yellow line might be helping it stay in the in the lane here and be patient with its speed. Looks like the visualization and the mapping is doing pretty good. It's obviously putting that drivable space curb in the wrong spot underneath those cars. A little bit of depth perception mismatch maybe. All right, that was that little village. It uh, did pretty good there. No unexpected behavior. We've got a sign over here that's talking about a survey crew ahead. It was kind of blocked behind that truck. Kind of see the survey equipment on the other side of the road. I don't know if we're going to have any construction workers, just the survey equipment. So nothing unusual marked there. That was a little bit non standard. Oh, here's the surveyman on the right. He is almost in the road. But it treated him like he was staying put. So that was good. Um, you know that when a car stops thinking uh, someone is in the road versus crossing the road you know while he actually looked like he was in the road he didn't have any actual uh, speed 
uh, or forward motion. So that might be that more accurate predictions for VRU's logic that is in the release notes. Flashing yellow here, looks like we've got another survey crew on the left. And uh, flashing yellow, I'm seeing red again. So we're still getting red lights shown on the display for those flashing yellows mixed in there. A couple cones around that survey equipment there. Looks like it mapped it fine. It's not overreacting to a whole lot here. All right, here's a, a, a quick left turn. Needs to get in the right lane um, to take the right turn here after this. So you can see in the, in the map there, it's got a quick left and a quick right. Looks like we're gonna end up having to wait on our turn at the light here. Yeah, so far so good. I, you know, relatively smooth, made a good decision getting out on the unprotected right to start the drive out. Jumped out of the lane there in that construction uh, area as, as we were approaching. He tried to jump into the left turn lane when it needed to go straight, and it was all mapped straight. So that was that decision to stay in traffic or, or go around stop traffic. I leave mine in the average uh, setting here, and okay, well, let me pay attention here. We're left turn, it needs to get into the right lane right away. Blinker, there it is jumping over it that was just fine no but there was it, it didn't have to squeeze any tight gaps there now it cannot see left here because of this truck which is a great scenario and as a driver it doesn't matter where I am I can't see I, I couldn't scoot far enough forward here so while I have permission to go right on red it's not trying it it's not even creeping um, Interesting, and I have seen it do a right on red here before. I'm not going to tap the accelerator. I'm going to just let it do its thing. I'm really glad it's not trying a right on red. This is a large truck that is completely blocking the view. And in order to get a good visibility, it would it would have to go pretty far forward. All right, there's the green coming right. It just waited its turn there. That was completely legal and fine. While it may be somewhat annoying for someone behind me that might be in a hurry, because uh, right on red is legal there, um, taking a right on red is not um, a requirement. Looks like we got a green light up there. A little bit of uh, midday traffic, which I think is great. We're going to have some interactions here. And the right light turned yellow already, so we're going to wait. He's getting this left lane here. That's a turn lane. It looks like it's correctly doing that. Let's see if it stays patient here. All right, if you look back just a few seconds, that uh, lane vector logic it just showed had a had a polygon in there that time instead of just the blurriness. That was interesting. I'll have to keep an eye out for that. That was completely fine, that intersection. Nice and patient. This is where it needs to wait again. See, it's the left turn lane over there. It's not jumping the line there. That was good. A couple potholes here. He just went around a pothole. I'm going slow enough. I'm gonna just go right over you, over them to show it didn't deviate at all. That car right in front of me went around it. It was definitely a mark, uh, a pothole that was in the ground. Um, it didn't deviate around it at all. This road has a few spots like that.
Notice we have one inoperative light up here. One's working and one's not. It obviously took its signal from the one that was working. That was interesting. All right, well there we have reached the end of uh, the first leg of Memorial Park First Impressions. I would have to say uh, I think it did a good job. Obviously it had a little bit of a jump there on, on one of the lane changes. It jumped out of the uh, correct lane and into a turn lane that it shouldn't have. I think that was the only um, major disengagement I have. I did have an intervention there going through the construction area with the roundabout. That um, is, I'm sure, a vision versus mapping uh, disagreement, and it was unsure of the legality of proceeding. Um, so I think that was something they're just going to have to give vision priority on adjusting here, um, whether or not it proceeds or not. Now here's the, I, I've got the uh, FSD uh, return route in here. Now here's the interesting situation. I've got a, well, I, I thought I was going to be able to engage it with a car that was standing. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and engage here and see how it treats this car. It, it looks like it wants to go around it, but this car is now proceeding. You see how it got over? And then now it looks like it slid back. So that was a scenario where it, it thought it was just a standing car waiting, but then the car started moving and it got back over. That was great. All right, this is our funny three-directional turn where it needs to creep and it needs to now wait. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I had to go ahead and intervene there. I waited as long as I could. The traffic was slow, which is why I even went. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to do that on my highway on protected left that it, it was just these cars are going about 20 miles an hour So I was able to kind of stick myself in traffic. It didn't commit um, So that was what I would call a big no-no Yeah, it, it needs to if it's in the road You got to go even with a commit speed to squeeze into a tight gap You just cannot sit there in that oncoming lane when there's cars approaching you at 90 degrees um I mean, in that scenario, I you know, there's probably parts of the world, and I will say I've seen videos of it where that's the way you drive. You just you put your car out there, you go, and you make other cars deviate around you. Um, that isn't how we drive here in Florida. Um, I, I will say I've seen people drive that drive that way. Usually, it's the the very elderly that don't like to turn their heads very far or even look in their mirrors. They just assume the world will will um, get out of their way uh, if they just drive slow enough. Um, and I've, I've seen that happen. But I don't think that's what the Tesla is trying to emulate. I think it's just being overly uh, cautious on its on its uh, decision making to the even to the extent of waiting in the lane. So this car that I was waiting on back there is going well below the speed limit. Um, the speed limit here is 30. This car is going about 20. I just let the car kind of stay behind, behind them because I wasn't in a hurry. Um, and what is interesting how is it's choosing to, to be patient and stay behind the car that is going well below the speed limit. I do have a little bit of traffic kind of stacking up behind me, but um, there's not really anywhere they can go. Now look at this. We have jaywalkers here. The light's green. Now granted, the, the Tesla didn't get to make this decision, but this car here allowed the jaywalkers uh, to, you know, to go in front of them, even though the arbor light was green and they did not have a walk sign. That would have been a good scenario if we'd have been in the lead. I'm sure the car would have waited once it saw them moving. A yellow that it should wait on there we go I, I would have waited on that one too sometimes when the car is, is going um, a little bit faster it goes to those yellow lights that was a good decision to wait on that one
quite a bit going on in this visualization of this intersection for a small little uh, stoplight intersection. It's not showing the arrows. It never has shown the arrows. Just to show you that when you got a green arrow and a green light, it's just showing them as green uh, on the visualization. It has crossed this yellow line before, and it did it again in order to give that car a little bit of room on the on that side. And then there was an oncoming car, and it got back over. That was that was really natural behavior. Okay, that was really good. That pedestrian came out. The pedestrian stopped. I got the alert. Everything stayed engaged, but it did not overreact. It actually slowed down very quickly, but then proceeded once it realized it was safe. That was that VRU model that is definitely improving. Um, to me, I, that, that person jumped out of nowhere. I saw it about the same time I heard the alert. The car stopped as if they were going to come into the road. They did not come into the road. I'm letting the car reroute here because we do have that construction up here. Um, so that was a very good uh, behavior there. All right, here we are on unmarked roads. Wow. Interesting what it's doing here. What's it doing? It stopped. Wow. I didn't have anybody behind me, but it completely stopped to let those cars go by on this unmarked road. There's plenty of room, but its choice, I'm gonna tag that, was to wait, which is not what I would have done. Um, it stopped so fast, if there'd been somebody behind me, and I don't know if you could see me glancing into my rear view mirror quickly when it did that, uh, it stopped so hard and fast, I, I might have gotten rear-ended if somebody wasn't paying close attention. That unmarked roads situation, when there's no middle line, needs some work. Uh, and I've done dedicated videos to that already. Um, it, it doesn't seem to understand how far to the right the drivable space actually goes um, on some of these roads if there's not a defined curb, like there wasn't a defined curb on that road back there. The school buses are all lined up over there for school getting out. I still have not had a great encounter with a school bus to understand if it'll stop for the stop sign on a school bus. My understanding uh, of the encounters I have had the city buses is it does not stop. It, it goes around them if it can fit around them. Right, this is a stoplight and a curve. So the line is here. It's well marked. Okay, and it turned green. That was all good. All right, at this intersection, which is obviously a little bit off of my standard route because I let the car do the rerouting due to the construction. This is a weird intersection, and I'm, I can just zoom in here so you guys can see it. This is a major highway. Uh, it's got a stoplight, but what I envision it's going to have a little bit of trouble with is the median that I have to go around is on the other side, and it's going to create this nice tight turn to the left. I don't know. I may be new at looking at this map, but I don't know that I've ever even noticed that little stoplight uh, icon being on the map before when I'm zoomed in all the way. I wonder if that's new. I got some stoplights there. Does anybody else know? Leave it in the comments below. Has that always been there? First time I've noticed it. On